Hi, I'm Mike. I'm sitting down with Charlie Baker from uh, Denver, and uh, he's kind of been involved with a lot of the groups out in that area, and he's also heavily involved in the uh, open source software. Uh, he did you know, you're maintaining water and things like that, but um, not retaining, maintaining. Um, <laughs> but uh, can you tell us a little bit about what you've been doing out in Denver with the different groups and and what you've been observing out out there? Sure, absolutely. Um, so in talking about user groups and, and talking about general community involvement, um, I moved out to Denver about six years ago from the San Francisco Bay Area. Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of user groups in the San Francisco area. Um, some of them were well maintained, some of them were not so well maintained. Um, when I came out to Denver, basically noticed there were a lot of um, disparate groups, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of kind of like splintered factions that didn't actually talk to each other very much. So yeah. there are Java, Java user groups. Uh, .NET user groups, uh, two Ruby user groups, so there's one down in Denver and one up in Boulder. Um, and there's not a lot of interaction between the various groups, uh, so there's not a, not a good sense of, uh, kind of the software craftsmanship or software software community as a whole right. in that area. Um, so one of the things in building out an office uh, for, was looking to build out an office for Optiva, now, right. now Groupon. Yes. Um, one of the things about hiring people in and doing that sort of thing is building out a community and getting a sense of community that you can actually draw from so that people know what's happening. Right. So, um, so you're, you're, you're kind of going, are you going to different user groups and talking to their leadership and, and trying to say, hey, what's, what's going on? You guys are doing these meetings, but... Sure. First, good, first, first good, step right things. now is get a sense of each, each of the user groups. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's interesting between the different languages and between some of the different communities that exist. So, you know, the .NET community, the uh, Java community and whatnot. Um, there's a different feel to, to each of the user groups. Um, so it's a matter of kind of figuring out what, what the different feel is. And then um, we were talking just briefly about kind of an overarching um, getting, the, getting the heads of those groups together so that you, you've got kind of a group of people that you can talk to about things like scheduling. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, if you're doing Ruby, but you're also interested in iOS programming, uh, make sure that those dates don't collide right. so that you don't end up having one sit on top of another. Um, if you're doing a um, conference, for example, we, were, we, we just did uh, Rocky Mountain Ruby um, was a few months ago, um, pulling people from you know, the iOS community, mm -hmm. pulling people from the Java community, um, getting getting people from outside the Ruby community interested in, and let them know that things like this are available. Right. So you mean, like, I'm a Ruby dad, but I've gone to, to Rocky Mountain Ruby, and I don't know that right in my backyard that there's a, and I'm, I use an iPhone, and I, I'm interested in iPhone. Hey, there's an iPhone um, iOS user group. Why don't you go check them out, you know? Is that the kind of... Yeah, that's like, exactly right. I mean, I find a lot of crossover between, um, you know, particularly in my experience between Ruby, um, people doing Ruby development going to uh, iOS and getting involved in that. Um, so, so just being aware that those groups are out there, um, getting people in the iOS groups and, and saying, you know, why don't you come out to a Ruby group, see how we do things, um, get the experience of that particular user group. And, and like I said, each of the user groups kind of has their own flavor. Um, so it's it's a really interesting experience to go from one language to another, um, and, and then even larger scale groups like uh, and, and agile groups. So there's agile Denver. Um, there are other groups kind of like outside of straight technical groups as well. Yeah, and you know I, I've done a few interviews today, and a few people who weren't necessarily uh, Ruby developers were looking at the Ruby community and and trying to use that as a model uh, for what they wanted would like to see in, in a .NET community or, well mostly it was .NET developers who are looking at the Ruby community. Um, as, as far as like working um, with user groups, uh, since you've been kind of cross-pollinating, uh, is it as dire as a situation in the .NET groups as, as some of the people in the .NET might think it is? And when they're looking over at Ruby thinking, oh that's the way I want to be, like, do you have any perspective on whether or not uh, maybe it's like, hey, just good, keep yeah. going in the direction yeah, you're doing. That's a great question. I mean, I, I think um, in the Ruby community, we've been really fortunate to, to have strong community builders. Mm -hmm. um, I think .NET and Java communities suffer somewhat from not having that. Mm -hmm. um, so I think there are lessons learned, and, and yeah. vice versa. I think there are lessons that the Ruby community can learn from other groups. Yeah. Um, in organizing a group, creating a conference, and all of the kind of common themes, I, th I think it makes sense for us to all to kind of talk together at kind of a more at a level, I, guess, right. I suppose. And uh, in this, 
would you recommend? Um, well, I don't want to be too leading into the question, but if you have, um, if somebody's a watching and they run a user group, they run a .NET or Java or an iOS or an Android group, what would you recommend they do to maybe become? I guess this is kind of a leading question: better citizens in their community. Uh, you know, they they they're they're working with their group, but how can they broaden their their perspective? That's a good question. I, I mean, I think attending another group in the first place and just going out to and finding out what's happening out there is good. Um, if you look at the various user groups, um, the people running the user groups generally are your community leaders. Right. Um, so it's a matter of you know getting those people together to create a broader sense of community in an area. So Denver itself has you know um, population-wise, it's somewhere around a million, something like that. Don't know the specifics. Um, but getting a broader sense so that we can all draw from kind of a common pool and have common experiences and, and kind of switch back and forth without having walls between the different communities. Yeah. And, you know, it, the other thing, you were saying that the, um, earlier you were talking about how a Ruby developer might be interested in iOS and even in our conversation a little bit earlier about meeting, um, meeting plans stepping on each other. Like, I, I'm a Ruby dev and I use Vim. It'd be nice if they right. just weren't on the right. same night. Um, do you see a lot of that kind of, like, I would like to go to both meetings. Do you see a lot of sure, um, people that are appearing at different groups that, you know, you see the same person going to multiple groups? Honestly, or, I don't see that very frequently, yeah. um, which is which is kind of surprising. Um, it, so I know a lot of, uh, you know, .NET and Java people who are, who are doing that during the day and they want to do Ruby at night. Um, you know, so they so there are different interests, and it, your day job might not necessarily be where you might want to go. Mm -hmm. So attending or vice versa, you, maybe you go uh, an iOS group from a .NET group, something like that. Um, but not a lot of cross pollination. There's not a lot of cross pollination right now. Um, so it is people tend to be stuck in in their various communities, and there are walls between the communities. Um, I, I think probably one of the better. Um, one of the least walled communities is kind of uh, Ruby and iOS, so mm -hmm. I keep mentioning that. Uh, Ruby and JavaScript, for yeah. instance, as well. Yeah, but, um, that because I find there's a lot of crossover and there's a lot of interest by Ruby developers in in these different technologies. Yeah, uh, and most uh, Ruby developers are also web developers, and they have known Max. And that's iOS. right. You know, so <laughs> that's right. So it's a natural. It's yeah, a, it's absolutely a natural, natural crossover. Um, whereas I see, um, you know, I, I did Microsoft development years and years ago, and I find um, doing Microsoft development. It's very tough because you you do end up kind of um, caught into a a very specific community and, and a lot of people don't get outside of it. Okay, so you know the recommendation is to try to find out what other groups are in your area. Find out what if you lead a group, absolutely go check out their some other meetings and talk to their talk to the people. The community leaders from each group should be talking to each other to create kind of a broader sense of community. I have no sense of competition between the various groups. I think it makes sense for us all to collaborate together on building out a community and area. Right. Um, so, you, you know, as, as far as finding people, there's a dearth of software engineers and it's very hard to find people right now. Um, so I think creating a community makes it much easier to find people to talk to people and figure out how people are solving those types of problems which affect all of our communities. Great. Well, thank you very much, Charlie, for sitting down with me. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. See you, Grant. Thank you very much.